recently I have become a huge horror movie fan. I never used to be when I was younger. I didn't like horror movies. It wasn't really until about three, two or three years ago that I really got into them because uh, I was really scared of them. If I'm being honest, That's, I was a scaredy cat growing up, and I was scared of these movies. I did not want anything to do with them at all. Uh, and so that's why I never got around to seeing these two movies, just because I was, at the time they came out, just too scared and didn't want to see them. Uh, but now that I've gotten a little bit older, I guess, uh, I, I'm not really that scared of these movies like I used to be. So I, I, now I kind of watch them as films and I'm more into them. And I, I've fallen in love with this genre. What used to be my least favorite genre is now one of my favorites. And I love horror movies. I love the horror genre. I think some of the most unique movies and storylines and characters even come from horror. Uh, and, and I love this time of year. I love October for this reason. I love scary movies now. So I figured this would be a great time to talk about some of my favorite scary movies and some that I just haven't seen yet. And the first movie I'm going to talk about uh, is a film that got a lot of cult following uh, in the late 2000s uh, after its release in 2009. It's a, it's a movie from Holland, the Netherlands. Uh, it's directed and written by Tom Six. Uh, this is the only film he's done outside of the two sequels to this film. This is one of a, of a trilogy. Uh, and I will never see the following two movies, and I'll explain to you why. But uh, this film, uh, like I said, had a huge cult following in the late 2000s. A lot of people were talking about this movie. Uh, my sister went and saw it at the time in theaters, and was she said that she was disgusted and disturbed by it. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what she was saying. She was terrified by it. And I never got around to seeing this movie. It's the human centipede. Um, <laughs> the first sequence. Yeah, this, uh, I had never seen this movie. I'd heard so much about it, obviously. The famous South Park episode, The Human Centipede, which is arguably one of my favorite South Park episodes ever, period. It's hilarious. Uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm not the biggest South Park guy in the world, but I loved that episode. I thought it was hilarious, so original. Uh, and was a great take on this movie. But like I said, this movie got a lot of attention because of its imagery, because of its theme, theme and because of how silly it really is if you think about it. So going into this, I was just kind of hoping it would be a lot pretty tongue-in-cheek, not take itself too seriously, but at the same time be jarring and disturbing and have that, that body horror and, and that you would expect from a movie like this. So going in, that was kind of my thoughts. Now, as I've seen it, I was really shocked at how seriously this movie takes itself. Um, this movie was pretty disturbing and really unsettling, and I was pretty surprised, honestly. Uh, I was not expecting this movie to be like this. I was, but I was not expecting it to take itself as seriously as it did. Now, basically, for anyone that doesn't know the plot, it's pretty simple. And I'm going to spoil this movie because uh, I do a 10-year rule where if the movie's over 10 years old, I'm going to spoil it. So in this case, this movie came out in 2009. I'm spoiling this. Um, so basically this movie surrounds two girls, two like young, you know, girls in their 20s, my age, something like that. You know, they're in they're in Europe on a trip, on a, on a road trip in Europe when uh, their car breaks down, they're stuck in the middle of nowhere and they get out and find a home to try and get contact with civilization where they can, you know, get their car fixed and whatever. And uh, they, they stumble upon the wrong house. Uh, it ends up being the house of a mad German scientist. And uh, he takes them in, drugs them, and, uh, well, they were in for a surprise they never thought they would see, which is uh, to be become a part of the human centipede. So, what do I think of this movie? Uh, I thought it was really bad. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be honest. I thought it was a bad movie. Um, you know, it, it was messy. Uh, but I think my... The thing I didn't like about it the most was that this movie really had no story or substance or character to it. And if you're going to do this kind of movie, give me some substance, give me some character, or give me some levity and give me some humor. And this movie didn't do either of that. This movie has a very dreadful, dreadful tone from beginning to end. Uh, and if you're going to do a movie like this, make me care about the characters. And this movie did not do that. Uh, these two girls off the bat, I mean, you get some horrible dialogue off the bat. I mean, this is not a great written movie by any means. Uh, and, it, and like, the thing is, it, it's trying to be. It's trying to be, like, super, you know, philosophical at times, especially towards the end of the film, but it just kind of falls on its face because these characters are so hollow and so poorly written. Uh, these girls are morons from the start. They write these girls to be morons in this movie. 
Uh, I mean, they, they make really stupid decisions that get them in the position to become the human cent- centipede. Um, basically, this movie eats shit. <laughs> um, that's the best way to describe it. But, uh, you know, it these girls... Uh, they're 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 made to be morons in this movie, and they are pretty much you know they come in, they 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 trust this dude who just looks super sketchy. Looks this, this I mean the the scientist in this movie, he looks like the stereotypical like Nazi evil German scientist. You know like stereotypical with the with the glasses and the lab coat and all of it. I was just like ugh, like this is so ridiculous. But and, and that's the thing. I I I found myself laughing a lot during this movie. And I and you're not supposed to laugh because this movie's supposed to be really disturbing and dreadful. And it is. It's very disturbing and very dreadful, but I found just the whole idea of the human centipede to be so silly and so ridiculous. Like I could totally tell that the guy writing this, Tom Tom Six I bet he had a lot of fun writing this because I bet him and his friends just got, you know, drunk one night, one night on a night of poker and, and we're talking about, you know, just speculating on movie pitches and they came up with this ridiculous story. And, and, and this movie, it's just, it's so ridiculous. And even when you see the human centipede, uh, which isn't about what, which you don't tell about halfway through the movie, once you see them actually in it, I think the prosthetics were actually really good in this movie and I'll get into that, but it, it just, it's so silly. And, and, and I wish this movie didn't take itself as seriously as it did. Cause I think it just, it tries so hard to be like really like bone chilling and uncomfortable. And it is in its imagery, but not in its character or story. You know, it's very basic and hollow. Uh, and this movie pretty much just seems like it was made just for, you know, people that love to watch other people get tortured on screen, you know, like, and th- this has a market. This does like Eli Roth has made a lot of movies like this. Uh, the green Inferno was one I saw in theaters. That was, was very, uh, gratuitous in its gore and violence. Um, also, uh, uh the saw movies were, were famous with this. Uh, you know, a lot of these body horror, horror, horror movies that come out, um, they kind of just exist just to disgust people and to gross them out. And that's what this movie kind of does. Uh, and like I said, it, it lacks a lot of the substance and story and character uh, that I think a good mo- uh, like that could have made this movie really good. Uh, now, let me get into some things I did like about this movie. There are a couple scenes in this movie that really kind of were really disturbing. Uh, one of them being the scene where there's the mad scientist gets these two girls uh, after he kidnaps them. He had, had kidnapped um, a guy who was taking a poop in the woods at the beginning of the movie. Like, that's like the opening shot of the movie. You see this guy taking a poop in the woods, and then uh, the scientist catches him, which is why I thought this movie was going to be kind of silly, because I'm like, they're starting off the movie with a guy taking a, a poop in the woods. Like, you know, this is going to be silly. But that's really the only silly part of this movie, because it takes itself super seriously, and and I just couldn't take the movie as seriously as it was taking itself. Um, but... Um, this scene in particular, he gets these two girls, uh, and, and like I said, he has the guy that was pooping in the woods. They give him lethal injection because he's like, this guy's too big. His body's too big. He can't, you know, he won't fit in the centipede. So they get he gets this, uh, I guess, this Asian uh, tourist uh, who he kidnaps. You don't really know how he kidnaps him, but you see the, the two girls in hospital beds tied up, and then you see the Asian guy next to them tied up in, in, the, in a bed. And the scene, it's, it's kind of silly, uh, but... I thought it was kind of really well done. And, it, it, and basically what happens is the, the scientist basically explains to the audience and to these characters what they're going to go through. And basically he, he explains how the human centipede is made. And I thought it to be really kind of disturbing because just the, the actors, I think, did a good job of the scene. And um, they did a really good job of making you feel really uncomfortable about this whole situation and making you be like, man, what, what would happen if you were, were ever thrown in a situation like this? You're going out one night for a party and next thing you know, you're being get your face sewed onto someone's butthole but um yeah man it, it, i i was i was watching this movie and i was like man this is this is really intense i was not expecting this uh and i and that's why i kind of wish this movie had some more substance to it with these with these girls i wish these girls had a little bit more to them because if they did i would have cared more and i would have been really into this but uh they just they rushed to the centipede too much without actually really giving any sort of valuable character information or dialogue. But, um, nevertheless, 
the scene just shows he has like an overhead projector and he's like showing the slides of like how he's going to do it. And you're just like, man, this is crazy. Um, that scene I found to be really, uh, really jarring and really kind of creepy. Um, and then also there is a scene, um, that happens where you see the human centipede. I think it's like one of the first times you see it and they get, he gets, uh, the scientist gets a giant mirror and he shows each of the members of the centipede their, you know, what they look like and they see themselves in this position and it's really disturbing. And I think the prosthetics in this movie were really well done because like, you know, you, these characters, they see themselves in the mirror and you're like, man, like, could you imagine seeing yourself like that? Like that's that nothing's more demoralizing than that. Uh, but (laughs) you know, um, like I was saying, the the special effects and the, and the prosthetics, I thought they did a really good job with, especially for how low budget this movie is, because uh, they made this for a really low budget, and obviously it, it got really big. But I think the prosthetics were actually really well done. The effects were really well done. Uh, my biggest problem has was the story and the characters. Like you don't care about any of these characters. You just want to see the centipede after about five minutes of the opening act of this movie. The first act is definitely the weakest part of this movie. And to be honest, I think the second act is the strongest of the three. Um, the second act has, a, you know, probably the most disturbing scenes because you're just seeing, you know, the centipede for the first time, and it's really kind of, uh, but uh, it, you know, they they, they get a, did a good job with the with the uh, with the prosthetics. Uh, but like I said, man, you don't care about these girls. You don't care about the the characters really, and, and they try to make it very like deep and, and philosophical, but it's just. You don't care, and they don't give enough substance to the the villain either. You know, he get you get some exposition, but you don't really get to understand what kind of guy he is. You know, just he's just kind of evil for the sake of science and to be evil, and that just wasn't good enough for me. Uh, I wish there was a little bit more there. Uh, and, and every character in this movie is a moron. The girls are morons. Uh, the cops that show up uh, towards the end of the movie, they're morons. Uh, and even the doctor, the scientist at times, is a moron. So, you know, there just, <laughs> there just wasn't any likable, relatable characters in this movie. And I think this movie was really just made for body horror and for the shock value of it. And, and I think it worked on that on that level. But as far as a horror film, as far as, you know, anything groundbreaking, nothing here. And, and like I'm saying, I, like I said earlier, I wish this movie had some more humor and levity to it. Uh, similar, and I think a movie that did this really well was uh, Kevin Smith's Tusk that came out in 2014. I thought this movie did a really, really better job of making this kind of disturbing body horror kind of movie, but having some levity and some character to it to actually make you care about what's happening to the characters or character in this in that case. Uh, and this movie doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have any relatability to it. it it's literally just disturbing. Distur- you know, it's literally just annoying girls to disturbing scene disturbing scene disturbing scene disturbing scene disturbing scene disturbing scene end <laughs> and the ending i didn't like either uh you know it's kind of hopeless and it makes you think what the hell was the point of this movie in the first place uh and i like hopeless endings if they make sense and this one i guess makes sense in in, in the confines of the story uh but it just didn't do anything for me. It didn't punch. It didn't have anything. And that's maybe just because I didn't care about these characters or the story to begin with. So I think I, I didn't necessarily hate the ending as much. I wouldn't have hated it if they would have added some more layers to the story. Uh, I think the ending, the actual resolution that they go with could have worked and really been chilling, um, you know, because the middle girl ends up being the last one alive. And I think that's like a good idea. But again, I, I wish I cared more about the girl. I don't. Um, and that's kind of my thing with this movie. Uh, the, the characters didn't really have anything for me to grab onto. Uh, and, uh, but I do think the special effects, uh, I do think the, uh, the, the, the effects were good in terms of makeup and prosthetics. I thought that stuff was really well done. The acting is terrible. Uh, not good. The, the girls were not good. I thought the scientist was okay. I thought he was kind of fun and menacing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't love this movie. I didn't. I thought it was fine. Actually, I didn't even think it was fine. I didn't think it was good. I, I didn't like this movie. Uh, you know, the, the like I said, uh, there, there. Uh, I would prefer Tusk. I think you should watch that over this, and, and maybe even some of the Saw movies. But uh, will I ever see this again? No. And and will I watch the sequels? Never. I will not watch them. Uh, and it's not because I hate this movie or want to boycott this movie. It's just because I've seen enough of this, man. I, you know, it, it, it's silly. 
Uh, and like I said, watch the South Park. Watch the South Park episode. That was funny, what they did with that. So check that out. Because, yeah, this movie, I think, takes itself way too seriously. And that's my final point, is that this movie, it takes itself way too seriously. It, you know, it tries way too hard to be, like, emotionally draining. But, you know, you don't care about any of the characters. So it's not, really. <laughs> so uh, if I had to give this movie a grade... I'm going to go 1.2 out of 5 for this, uh, for the Human Centipede first sequence. 1.2 out of 5. I, I didn't love this one really at all. I won't watch this again. Uh, it is disturbing. It's jarring. Uh, and if you like these kind of movies, these really you know, gross, grotesque body horror films, uh, I definitely think you should maybe check it out. But again, uh, not one I'm going to see again. It, it, but it, it did have a cult following. It did have... It did make money. It was popular. So uh, shout out to you, Tom Six. You, you made a, an interesting film. You made one that people were talking about. And not a lot of people can say that. And even though it's not a good film, any publicity is good publicity. So uh, yeah, 1.2 out of 5 I think is a fair grade for this. It wasn't the worst horror movie. I think it's watchable because it's only an hour and a half. But it's not good. It's not good. You don't care about anything that's really going on. And you really just want to see the centipede. And then after you see it, you're like, uh, you know, ooh. Uh, but I thought the scene where they climb up the stairs at the end and there, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Cause I'm like, God, could you imagine how hard that would be on your knees? Uh, I mean, at that point, your joints are already effed up as it is. He already takes out your patellar tendon. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the scenes where they have to poop are really funny too. And they shouldn't be. And there's, I found myself laughing at times in this one. So, uh, it, you know, I think this would be a good one to watch with your buddies on like a, you know, Saturday night with nothing going on during COVID. Uh, this would be a good one to just throw on and, and drink some drink some whiskey to and, you know, laugh. Get a good laugh out of it. But uh, at the same time, it is really disturbing. And I could see how my sister could see this in theaters and be really disturbed because the imagery, it, it's, it's gross and it's disturbing. The surgery scene, uh, I thought was well done too. I forgot to mention. Um, you know, when he actually does the surgery, they show like him cutting the skin and all that. And that actually looks pretty good too. So I, like I said, the prosthetics are definitely the best part of this movie. And I think that's really the part they needed to nail and they nailed it. So, you know, you achieved your goal there, but as for this being a, a film or even a close to a good film, 